Hi, I'm Jeff Gonzalez, president of Trident Concepts. And today I want to talk to you about basic CQB tactics. So we conduct a solo CQB class, which is a class designed for one person to be able to clear either an internal or internal structure or external area. Why is that an important skill set for you to develop? Well, there could be a lot of reasons. Uh, you could be working in a large building where after hours you hear some sort of commotion that causes you concern. You could be coming home to your residence when you spot some sort of indicator, maybe a window's broken, door's open. You could be in your home and you hear window break, door break. So there's a lot of reasons why you might want to consider some basics, basic understanding of CQB tactics from an solo one person point of view. Now the reason why I would caution you on performing any of these in a real setting is because it's impossible for you to look before and behind at the same time. You just can't do it. Which means that you're gonna greatly expose yourself to some unknown threats. So what I encourage you to do, there are three things that I encourage you to do. First, when possible, be armed. Second, if there's not a clear reason for you to investigate this commotion, strong point in the best position possible, call for help. But third, if this is part of an emergency action plan that you have to proceed, maybe you have to leave the building, maybe you have to go uh, to where your children or family members are, all right, let's talk about how would we do this. So the first thing that we talk about is the speed of movement needs to be slowed way down. Do not be in a hurry to expose yourself to so many unknowns or danger areas that you become overwhelmed and potentially miss some of the more obvious things. Slowing down is also going to help you to pick up on target indicators, things that you might not have picked up on because you're moving too fast. You couldn't hear something, couldn't see something. These are things that you want as much information in advance as possible. And a lot of times in some sort of gunfight scenario, it's not who is the better shot, who has the best gear, who has the best mission. It really boils down to who see who first. So if you see the bad guy before the bad guy sees you, you can take action. You have the initiative. Now what action you take, that's subject to another video. All right, so we slow down our movement, try to pick up on as many target indicators as possible. You need to understand general architecture, right? We have hallways, rooms, stairwells, then we have doors and doorways. What you have to do is have a system that allows you to process through all of that. If you're moving from the outside to the inside, obviously you're gonna to have to move through an external door. What's the condition of the door? Open, closed. If the door is closed, well, you're gonna to have to figure out what side of the door that you're gonna to wanna to be on. A lot of that can be dictated to you by your direction of movement. It may not make sense for you to move in front of the door to the other side just because you wanna gain access to the door knob. That could telegraph your movement to anybody on the inside of the room in any kind of air that's underneath the door. So try to avoid movement right in front of the door. Other things to consider is what type of door are we looking at? Yes, I know it's an external door, but is it a push type? Where I, sorry, is it a pull type where I pull it open? Or is it a push type where I push it open? Because that's gonna also determine how you best tackle that particular doorway. Now, once the door is open, or if you had an open door, the best thing that you can do is to perform an external clear before you ever commit to moving inside of that space. That external clear is just gonna work a, a large arc around the doorway. Now, as you're doing that, what you're doing is you're taking in more information than where you originally started from. So as you move, you start to gain a bigger perspective, but realize that you also lose perspective. So while you might have seen the right side of the room, as you move to clear in the left side, you lose the right side. So you're going to want to do this in a manner that allows you to see everything that you need to see. There's going to be obstacles and oddities that you can't see or can't see behind. For instance, furniture or alcoves. And you are going to need to make a mental note of those particular oddities and obstacles. The next thing is, is there a compelling need for me to go into that space? 
if there is, do I need to penetrate into the space or can I do what we call a limited penetration, which is where I stay right inside the doorway or the arc of the door? And that does two things. Number one, it doesn't overcommit me into the space. If something gets bad, I can quickly escape. That's good. And number two, from a time perspective, maybe I don't want to go too far into the space. Maybe there was an oddity or an obstruction that prevented me from getting a visual clear. And if I move into that limited penetration zone, I can clear it and at least know that whatever, when I put this room behind me, I have done a pretty decent job of visual clear in the space. So the third option is to fully clear the room by making entry into that space and pursuing around the room to clear any danger errors or dead spaces that you can't see. Great, all right? And the way that you would approach that is the very same manner that you would do the external clear, which is where you work in a bite-sized manner. Take one bite at a time, nice and easy, right? Now, after that, I need to go ahead and move to the next space or move to the next threat, whatever that might be. Where's the hallway? Where's the next doorway? Where's the space that I wanna eventually make my way towards? And all you're gonna do is you're gonna connect these little kind of rooms together and these clearing methods together as you move through that space or as you move through the structure that you're trying to clear. Now there's no simple way, there's no easy way to do all of this, but what I tell people is if you have to do this, remember, be armed, go slow, only take as much of, only bite off as much real estate as you can actually manage. Don't go too far, don't penetrate into space if you don't have to. And then just chunk one danger area together until you have completed the entire space and are good to go as far as your objective for your emergency action plan of going from A to B. So this is just some basic down and dirty of things to think about. There'll be more videos where we get into the nitty gritty of stuff, but this right here should at least help you to start to create your own plan for how you're gonna manage. All right, I'm Jeff Gonzalez. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post them down below. Until then, take care and stay safe.